then um, he started, his health kind of started to decline a bit. Um, and then he ended up getting an infection, a colon infection. He was getting iron infusions at the time. He ended up getting that. Um, we didn't know that was what he had. And he was just, uh, his health declined pretty quickly. So we ended up in the ER. Um, he was like having trouble with uh, walking. I mean, not walking, he could walk, but he would just get super tired and um, have to like hurry up and sit down. His heart would start racing or he would get dizzy or blurred vision. He was just having, you know, uh, where he would get the kind of the days, like he would come upstairs and then all of a sudden he would just freeze. And you're just like, are you, babe, are you okay, babe? And he would just be. Like that, it was very scary. So you would get him to come back, you know, babe, babe, like touching him or whatever. And then he would you know, come back and be like, oh. And then you have to hurry up and get him to sit down. So we didn't know what was going on. So we went to the doc, the ER. They ended up telling him he had an infection, a colon infection, and that he was dehydrated. That's all they told him. So they gave him fluids. We came home, he was drinking all this Pedialyte. We couldn't figure out. He was still having that trouble where he would get super tired, walking and blurred vision and all of that. So he went to his um, primary doctor. Uh, it was a new doctor. So that doctor said that he thought his um, thyroid medicine was, wasn't was dosed right. So he gave he raised the thyroid dosage, came home, started the new dose, still having these issues. And then it became where his blood pressure, we started checking his blood pressure, his blood sugar level. And um, his blood sugar level was okay, but his blood pressure was um, really low. So it was like, and 70 something over 50 something, very low. And um, so we ended up taking him to the ER. And once we got to the ER, um, his blood pressure was 50 something over 30 something. So, and his cortisol level was 0.1, which is almost zero cortisol. I don't even know how he made it in there so they admitted him so because it's covid pandemic i couldn't go with him um plus we have our kids at home so we couldn't all go so i had to stay home with the kids so i dropped him off at the er so then they admitted him um so then i went in there and um when i went or actually prior to me going i told him tell them to test you for addison's again because i swear you're the symptoms you're having it just sounds like Addison's and I was like and with Addison's um, you know the uh, if you have an infection it can lead to an adrenal crisis and that was kind of why I knew it was Addison's because those blank stare blackouts I knew I was like that is not normal by any structure of the imagination and it's he's having the adrenal crisis and that's what I really believed and I'm gonna get more into the adrenal crisis here shortly. So they tested him for Addison's. Um, and I'm trying to think if they did it right away. I think by the time they tested and got the results back, it was like, let's see, they admitted him on Monday. I think we got the results back on Wednesday. So based on th those results, and I'm like, wow, like, I thought this a year ago. We could have been treating him for this and he could have been better by now, like a year ago, you know? Um, based on that, you know, there's a certain way that you treat Addison's disease and because, and so I joined a couple of support groups um, on Facebook and, you know, I did a bunch more research on, I had already researched it a ton, but I just started researching it again. I was watching YouTube videos um, was how I learned a lot, listening to lectures from doctors. I listened to a lecture from a doctor from the Mayo Clinic, um, listened to people who had Addison's disease, sharing their story about how they were diagnosed and all of this. And so I knew it was common 
for them to not get diagnosed or get misdiagnosed. Um, some of them for years, would, they go years before they would actually get their diagnosis. So I knew that was common. Um, and I also knew that the doctors don't know how to treat this, especially at the hospital and ER and stuff. You have to go to a specialist, an endocrinologist, and not even all of the endocrinologists really know how to treat it because it's such a rare disease. Um, I'll share the uh, what the stats are for it, you know, how rare it is, but it's very rare. Um, so I knew those things. So I was kind of like already ready to knowing that I'm, I'm going to have to be an advocate for him and really kind of maybe fight for, for him to get the proper care. Um, and sure enough, sure enough, um, it, it immediately, like they weren't doing what he had was a crisis. It's called an adrenal crisis. I'll put um, the information up, but with an adrenal crisis, um, it's like your body doesn't have the cortisol that it needs and um, you can die from it. It's life threatening. What they need, um, if you have this condition, is 100 milligrams of hydrocortisone. You need it in an IV or as a shot intramuscular or um, subcutaneous um, and you need it immediately. And then you also need to have like a saline drip of fluids. Um, and that's just kind of the, it is the standard of care. It's like the protocol. If you have a crisis, you need that. Um, also, once you have a crisis, you need a higher dose than normal. Cause when you have this condition, you have to take hydrocortisone um, to basically mimic your body making cortisol because your body's not making cortisol. Your adrenals are not making cortisol. Either they're not making it at all or they're not, ma not making enough. And cortisol is what, it helps us um, live basically. <laughs> so we make additional cortisol in our bodies when we're under stress, if we're sick, it's kind of that fight or flight, you know, that's what kicks in and um, helps us make it live in those situations and if your body's not making it you don't have that um and so you have to when you're under stress like you're sick or you just had a crisis you need more cortisol um because you have to mimic what your body would do which is make additional cortisol to help you live <laughs> and so um what they did is they just, um, they gave him hydrocortisone. They weren't giving him enough hydrocortisone. And it took him, I kept telling them that he needed the IV, the 100 milligrams of hydrocortisone. So here's the part that's really important. So you can't always do just what the doctors tell you. You do your own due diligence, do your own research as much as you can. Google is super helpful. Wikipedia, there's, um, you know, medical, once you do the Google, you'll see the more uh, um, reliable sites, um, you know, like whether it's in the conditions website or an association or something like that, or um, a doctor's pra a medical practice or a hospital, they put information out. Definitely read all of that. Um, also, YouTube is huge. People are making YouTube videos, just like I'm making this one, sharing their own personal stories. And sometimes just hearing that helps you know if it's similar to what you're dealing with, even more than reading um, the stuff. Now you can't take that as like, that's it for sure, but it's just more information, more real life information. And sometimes I feel like that's what the doctors are missing, um, especially with this disease state. They may have like kind of an a idea based on what they read on what you should do, but with this disease state, it's so personal and you have to um, adjust things so much based on that individual and that's the part that they don't understand. 